ReZero is a series that is very dear to me. I remember binging it when the pandemic first started and I found myself falling in love with it. Speaking of love, when I first laid my eyes on ReZero's first ending, Styx Helix, it was love at first sight. On the surface, Styx Helix seems like a decent ending. A really good song, nice visuals, but nothing crazy. However, Styx Helix is up there as one of the best endings of all time. One just needs to look a little closer. While the lyrics and visuals do hold importance to the meaning of the song, even the name holds value and strikes a deeper understanding of its relation to the show. Styx is the name of the river of the underworld in Greek mythology. It's used to transport the newly dead souls across into the underworld. One of the stories surrounding River Styx is that if one bathes in its waters and survives, they will get the curse of Achilles and become invulnerable to most physical attacks, except for a small spot on their body that if struck would instantly kill them. Sounds quite similar to Return by Death, doesn't it? As Return by Death makes Subaru invulnerable as it prevents him from permanently dying. However, you could say that the one thing that Return by Death can't protect is Subaru's mental and emotional state. As he carries the scars and painful experiences of each death to the next loop, there have been times where he has mentally broken down. Further supporting River Styx's connection to Return by Death is how oaths made by the river bring something worse than death to the oath bearer if not fulfilled. When Subaru first died, he made an oath to Amelia that he will save her no matter what. We know that there is some sort of connection between Amelia and Satella aside from their looks, as when Subaru meets Satella in Arc 4, he makes the same oath to her that he will save her no matter what. If we believe that this oath applies to both Amelia and Satella, the fate worse than death is the pain and suffering Subaru receives for trying to speak about return by death or failing to save the ones close to him. Moving on to the next word in the name, helix. A helix is defined as an object shaped like that of a wire, wrapped around a cylinder or a cone. I find it very interesting that a helix is known as a symbol of resilience, which easily describes Subaru, as he continues to press on no matter how much pain and suffering is sent his way. Combining both sticks and helix, you could say it's a spiraling river of death. It could be foreshadowing how in Arc 3, Subaru gets to a breaking point and feels like he can't escape the spiral of death that he's stuck in. The spirals could be symbolizing the cycle of rebirth, a clear reference to return by death and that when Subaru dies, his soul is carried through the underworld before he is reborn as the cycle continues. With that being said, we can finally talk about the actual ending itself. Styx Helix opens with snow falling gracefully before we slowly pan towards Subaru and Amelia standing back to back on a black lake. It's interesting to note that the black lake could be representing River Styx as the color black symbolizes death. I believe the ending shows Subaru's perspective of the world around him and his view of return by death. Supporting this is that snowflakes are falling consistently throughout the ending. The snowflakes could be representing the ice-cold touch of death that Subaru feels every time before he returns by death. Another way of seeing it is that the snowflakes could be symbolic of new beginnings and represent how every time that Subaru dies, it's like he has a fresh start to do everything right this time. You could also say the snowflakes are simply just representing how Amelia and Puck can use ice magic. It's worth noting that Amelia has her eyes closed while Subaru's are wide open. There are several ways you can interpret this scene. Personally, I believe that Amelia having her eyes closed is intentional. When someone closes their eyes to something or someone, they are actively choosing to ignore or refuse to notice them. In Subaru's eyes, Amelia seems to be refusing to notice how he's trying so hard for her sake and that she isn't giving him any credit for making everything work out in the end. To Subaru, he's protecting everyone that he cares about while he suffers in silence, unknown to everyone around him as he dies over and over again. However, Amelia could be closing her eyes to everything around her, the discrimination she experiences or how she's unaware of Subaru's suffering for her. This could be also representing how innocent and naive she is to the world around her, as she is mentally around the age of 14 and 15 and mostly lived a sheltered life due to Puck and Fortuna. We then see flashbacks to Subaru's first loop in Lagunica, when Subaru was saved by Amelia, when they helped a little girl, and finally, Amelia's bright smile. We then cut back to Subaru, who seems to be lost in thought, before gritting his teeth. This scene is important as it highlights Subaru's motivation and reason to keep pushing through the suffering. He wants to repay the kindness that Amelia showed him on his first loop that no one gave him when he was all alone and lost. Subaru gritting his teeth could be potentially foreshadowing his habit of gritting his teeth under stress and biting his lip to the point where it bleeds. This may represent Subaru's inner thoughts each time he returns by death and his determination to find a way to protect the people he cares about. The next scene is very short and fairly straightforward. We see Appa Man holding an Appa, referencing Subaru's first checkpoint in Arc 1. 
Following the Appa scene, we have Feld and Rom together, followed by Reinhardt and the Bandits. Felt, Rom, and Reinhardt all have their eyes open, and just like with Amelia, I believe that this is all intentional. Subaru believes all three of them fully trust him and notice his good deeds, a stark contrast to how Subaru believes Amelia sees him. Following this scene, we have Puck, Beatrice, and Roswell together. It's interesting to note that Puck has his eyes open while Roswell's are closed and we can't even see Beatrice's eyes since her back is turned to the camera. I believe Puck's eyes are open because Puck is on friendly terms with Subaru and knows that his intentions are good. But if that's the case, why did he kill Subaru two times in Arc 3? This is because he believes Subaru committed three sins. He broke his promise to Amelia, came back against her wishes, and then he let her die. Aside from the two times where Subaru was either indirectly or directly involved in Amelia's death, Puck has been nothing but kind and supportive towards Subaru. Roswell having his eyes closed could be representing how, just like with most of the Roswell Mansion's residents, he doesn't fully acknowledge Subaru or trust him. Supporting this is how while Roswell was grateful for Subaru helping Amelia in Arc 1, he was more than willing to kill Subaru when he believed that he was behind Rem's death in Arc 2. I also think Roswell having his eyes closed could be representing how he doesn't acknowledge Subaru yet, as he has not sharpened his resolve and hopes that one day he will not disappoint him. Or, Roswell is closing his eyes to the world around him because each time Subaru fails to meet his standards, there is no meaning to his current life and he will leave it up to the next Roswell to fulfill his dream. With Beatrice, I believe having her back turned is intentional. Since we are viewing the characters from Subaru's perspective, Beatrice is easily the most distant person to Subaru. Beatrice is fairly isolated from most of the characters in the show and only really has connections to Puck, Roswell, and to some extent, Subaru. In Arc 2, during the first loop, she turns her back on Subaru, leaving him to die to the Ma Beast curse and not saying anything about it to him. One may argue that Beatrice did not turn her back on Subaru in Arc 2, as she protected him from Rom and Roswell during one of the loops and helped with undoing the Ma Beast curses from the kids in the village. However, Beatrice helped with both of these situations because of Puck's direct or indirect involvement. If Puck did not ask Beatrice to heal Subaru after mana draining him, Subaru wouldn't have been able to blackmail Beatrice into protecting him for a day. At this point of the story, Subaru and Beatrice's relationship is purely transactional and not transformational. Beatrice having her back turned may be representing how she feels about how the world has treated her. Beatrice is all alone and believes that person will not come for her, and that she is a failure of a spirit since she has not been able to fulfill her contract. Further supporting this is Beatrice's view of the world. The gospel that was given to her, the purpose of her existence, has in a sense turned its back on her, as the pages have been blank for quite some time and no longer give her a future. It won't be until the events of Season 2 that Beatrice will acknowledge Subaru as her contractor and finally not just open her eyes to Subaru, but open up to him and the others as well. In the next scene, we see Rom and Rem with their backs together. It's interesting to note that Rom's eyes are closed the entire time, while Rem's are closed until we get a close-up of her and her eyes open. With Rom, it's fairly straightforward why her eyes are closed the entire time. Rom has her doubts about Subaru and doesn't fully trust him at all, if Arc 2 didn't tell you that already. From Subaru's perspective, he was terrified of both twins after being killed by both of them in Arc 2 several times, even more so when Rom tried to avenge Rem by trying to kill him. It wouldn't be until the events of Season 2 that Rom begins to open up and trust Subaru even if there was no reason to, due to his track record of success. Just like Rom, Rem did not trust Subaru at all when he first came to the mansion and it did not help that he had Miasma all over him, which made him seem like a potential threat in Rem's eyes. In Arc 2, Rem was fairly cold and distant towards Subaru because of this. It wasn't until Subaru emotionally and physically saved Rem in Arc 2 that she opened her eyes to Subaru's true nature and not only opens up to Subaru and trusts him, but falls for him as well. It could also be argued that Rem opening her eyes to Subaru could foreshadow how in Arc 3 she begins to acknowledge Subaru as her hero and how that changes Subaru for the rest of the series. Following this scene, we have a transition to one of Elsa's blades cutting through the screen and showing her lurking in the shadows. I think it was a great choice to have her cloaked by the shadows, symbolizing her job as an assassin and a threat who is constantly working behind the scenes. We then transition to a bunch of glowing red eyes popping up, staring at the camera. Just like with the Elsa scene, this is pretty straightforward. The red eyes are all of the mobbies who are the main threat of Arc 2, and they are staring at their prey, Subaru. We then transition to easily my favorite scene of this ending. 
A dying Amelia's hand is being held by a dying Subaru, and with Amelia's last breath, she closes her hand around his. This scene is a callback to Subaru's first loop where he makes his oath to Amelia, I'm going to save you. There's something that is super bittersweet about this. In that loop, Subaru died first after holding Amelia's hand, but this ending implies that Amelia returned the jester. Amelia is known to be super kind and generous, so closing her hand around Subaru before dying could be Amelia trying to comfort Subaru before they die, or her apologizing for lying to him about her name. Knowing this, could Subaru getting returned by death and a connection to Satella be linked to his oath to save Amelia no matter what? I find it interesting that Subaru makes the same oath to Satella once he sees her for the first time in Arc 4 and notices that she looks exactly like Amelia. Moving on to the final scene of this ending, we see a white background with a purple hole in the middle before the purple hole grows and takes over the entire screen. We are greeted with the same dark shadowy place that Subaru returns to each time he returns by death. Then we see Satella's black hand reaching for the camera as if she's pulling Subaru from the brink of death or from the Styx River to give him another chance at life. Styx Helix is easily one of my favorite anime endings. I've always loved it, but after taking a deeper look into it, I now understand why I love it so much. While at the surface it looks very simple, when you look closely at it, it depicts Return by Death and all of the characters beautifully through visual storytelling. And not to mention, Styx Helix is just one hell of a banger. Thank you for watching, and if you would like to see more anime openings and endings analyzed, leave a like or even consider subscribing. I hope you all have a great rest of your day.